then, uh, when, when this band started, um, I guess when we started touring about, about three years ago, um, we got passed over by a really well-known Christian record label for being too Christian. Uh, yeah, well, well, because it's hard to market a band that, that preaches this much and that, that really doesn't go around sleeping with their girlfriends and getting drunk after shows and that really does do Bible studies and that really Amen. does pray for people. And, uh, and it's sometimes hard to market a band that's not afraid to challenge people. And, and, and what everybody told us was that we could only go so far if we kept, wanted to keep talking this much. <laughs> And, uh, and I don't think any of those people would have ever imagined that something like this would be happening. And so I want to tell you, this is not about, this is not about our band, I want to tell you that you are a part of a movement that is changing the music industry forever. I believe that there are going to be bands in a generation preceding us that uh, are succeeding us that, that are going to go so much further than we could ever go, that are going to reach so many more people, that are going to go with such depth of their wisdom and revelation and, and, and the spiritual that it's going to blow people's minds in the same way that uh, I have a friend here who, who is a founding member of one of the band, of a band called Zayo. Uh, right, and some of you know who this, this band is. And, and where they started, this band was a band that used to play in bars and, and see people uh, and, and see people fall on their faces in repentance and see people bring drugs and alcohol and packs of cigarettes and just lay them at the altar. And uh, and that band. Okay, so uh, and and that band. Uh, paved the way for bands like us. And I believe that what we're doing is pioneering a trail that bands coming after us are going to follow. But, but what I've seen here is that something that started as just five guys from Sioux City, Iowa that wanted to talk about Jesus has turned into to a congregation, an army of young people worldwide who are fearless and bold and seeking their God in the Do you see that? You can look around in this place and see that ashamed to call themselves followers of Christ in a scene in which it's totally rejected. This is revolutionary right here. This is absolutely world changing right here. I believe there are going to be schools that are changed. I know there will be families that are changed. I believe there will be cities that are changed and I know for a fact that this scene will never be the same because you are in it. And so as I've seen this, this thing form, we'll call it whatever you want, a, a congregation, a movement, a revolution, whatever. Uh, I, just, I just see so much power in this. And, and as we've been praying about this, I believe, uh, I believe that like the day that we heard we were going to be able to do the show, I believe God spoke to me and he said, uh, it'll be a new beginning for a new beginning. And what I, but what I think he meant by that is, is that there is, there is one moment, one window of every year in which, in which people are, are, are all turning their attention and their focus to the future. When we are, when we are forgetting the past and, and straining toward what is ahead, when everybody is looking at, at the new year, everyone is looking at what's right around the corner and forgetting what's behind. And, and I feel like God has said, the greatest hindrance to success in our future, to victory in our future, is our tie to the past. But what I mean by that is this, if, if, if you're coming in to this new year with, with addiction, with fear, with, with habitual sin, if you're coming into this new year with, with lust, with an addiction to pornography, yeah. if you're coming into this, this new year with hopelessness, I believe that I believe that, that lie is going to speak, that lie about your past is going to speak to you about your future and try to determine who you're going to be in the future. Hey Brian, can you turn this, can you turn that music off for now? Uh, sorry, I'm getting lost in the present. Uh, I, uh, okay, listen. I believe that the greatest hindrance to victory in your future is a tie to your past. I believe that what the enemy is going to try to do to every single one of you, whether you call yourself an atheist when you walked in here, or whether you are the most awesome Christian kid ever, uh, I believe that the enemy is going to try to convince you that you still are who you were before Jesus saved you. 
and that's a lie from hell, and I say that you are not still an addict. You are not still broken. You are not still afraid. You are not still depressed. You are not still hungry. And uh, as, uh, as, as, as we were seeking the Lord for this, I believe God, I believe God gave me this, uh, this scripture verse specifically for today. Uh, it's in Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 43. And God says, uh, Maggie. He says, it says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and there and, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. And now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And, and I think I think the, the two things that stuck out to me is that God said he was doing a new thing. And I hear people tell me all the time, well, God is the same here today, today. Oh, how could he ever do anything new? Because sometimes we need something new. Because sometimes the church that I grew up in that denied the power of the Holy Spirit and thought you were weird if you raised your hands during worship isn't going to do it for me. It's not going to captivate my spirit the way that the power of God is going to captivate my spirit. Right? Because sometimes I need something new to bring me to a new place and then in the depth of my walk with God. And I think the powerful thing is that, uh, is that it, it refers to God the God that delivered the, the Israelites from the captivity to the, the Egyptians. Let me run you through this story. The Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. And as they were enslaved in Egypt, they began to just cry out and say, God, aren't we your chosen people? How can we be slaves if we're, if we're your chosen people, right? If you've shown us favor, if you've made covenant with us, how can we be slaves? And then eventually God sent a man named Moses to bring deliverance to these people. And, 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 and so Moses rallied the, the Israelites and he went to the leader, the leader of the Egyptians and he said, you have to let my people go. And God came with such power behind those words that he brought plagues on the Egyptians, one after another after another, completely decimating their land until, until Pharaoh, the leader of the Egyptians, was backed into such a corner that he said, fine, you can go, just have God stop all these plagues. And so the, the, the Israelites were leaving and as they were leaving, the Egyptians began to pursue them. They began to come after them. And I think that's a picture of, of the place that a lot of us are at. That, that because of Jesus, the thing that's been keeping us in captivity has, has been forced to say, fine, you can go. But as we, as we left, it's just been chasing us perpetually. I believe there, there are people in this room right now that can testify to the fact that you know you've been set free from pornography. But for some reason, it still feels like he's chasing you every day. And there are people in this room that feel like you know you've been set free from, from cutting and from depression, but for some reason it just keeps chasing you every day. And that's what was happening to the Israelites that they had been set free, but the thing that had kept them in bondage was still pursuing them. And so they came to a place called the Red Sea. And God said to Moses, stretch out your staff and I'll part the waters. And so Moses came to the waters and he stretched his staff out. And the Lord parted the ocean. And three million Israelites walked across on dry land. And as, as the last Israelite stepped up out of the water, the, this ocean came crashing back down on everything that had been pursuing them. Drowning it. Overwhelming it. Devastating it. Destroying it. Completely liberating them from this pursuit. And this is the image that this scripture speaks to when it says that God made a path through the waters, that the path to deliverance is one that, that by necessity and by nature it carries us down into the waters and, and out on the other side we find liberation, we find freedom, we find deliverance. I believe that that's a word that God's given me for tonight when he said, a new beginning for a new beginning. You know, I, I think a lot of you are familiar with this concept of, of, of baptism. But I think that that's a mirror image of what God did with, with Moses and the Israelites. 
that these, these people are being constantly pursued by the thing that had kept them in captivity. Came to a place where they had to go down into the water. On faith. And then when they came out, on the other side, they were completely liberated. And this concept of baptism is, is, is one that, that is a prophetic indicator of, of in the physical of something that occurs in the spiritual when we fully commit our lives to Jesus. So what that, what that means is that as we are baptized, as we enter into the water, as we are submerged under the water, and as we're brought out, we are mirroring what Jesus did for us and that he entered into death. He was buried, submerged under it, and then he rose again. And then, and then we can say like Paul did, I've been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so as, as, as we, as, as people are, 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 are baptized, as we step into this prophetic gesture to say, to say, God, kill this person, the sinner, the broken man, the hopeless and the addicted one, kill this person, put this person to death on the cross the death that they deserve and, and let me say that it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. I believe that God honors that prophetic gesture and that God brings deliverance from the things that have been seeking to put us in captivity. So, uh, so I call out to you. I call out to you, is anybody in this place that could say whether you came in here claiming to be an atheist, whether you came in here claiming to be a Christian, if you can say that there is something pursuing, if there is if there is something that is that is trying to overwhelm me, if there is something that's trying to keep me in captivity, it's chasing me and trying to bring me back to the place that I've already been delivered from. Would you just raise your hand? Look around. I think the greatest lie the enemy could ever tell you in this position is that you're alone. And I say to you, you are not alone. Keep your hands up. I say you are not alone. When I said this is a congregation, this is an army, I meant it. You are a movement that will turn the world on its head. And I believe with everything in me that if you learn to fight with each other, this scene, this city, this state, and this generation will never be the same. And so every single one of you with your hands up, I just declare over you in the name of Jesus, just deliverance from bondage. Deliverance from bondage in the name of Jesus. I say that, that as, as Jesus said in the temple, I've come to set the captives free and to restore sight to the blind. I believe that, I believe that, that prophecy is fulfilled in you today. I say that this prophecy is fulfilled in your presence today, that Jesus comes to set the captives free. Right now, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just move on hearts right now. That you would just begin to change minds and just bring deep and real radical repentance, God. That you would just begin to grip people's emotions, God. That you would just begin to grip people's imaginations. That you would begin to turn people's spirits toward you, God. That you would really be all they can see. That this would not be some social trend that they hop on for a couple months, God. But that they would commit their every waking moment to knowing you and everything you have for them, God. And with our hands raised, we just say, Father, we surrender to you. We surrender to you, God. Thank you, Jesus. This is what, uh, when all of you guys just begin to pray with me, all out loud, just if you don't have anything to say, just invite Jesus to just come here. Say, Jesus, just come. All of you, out loud, Jesus, would you just come into this place? We begin to stir up this place, God, and we just say, you are welcome here. Jesus, we believe that you're a gentleman and that you only come when you're invited. And we just say, you are invited here. You are welcome here, Jesus. You are celebrated here, and we thank you and we honor you, Jesus. On fire right now, Jesus. Every evangelist in the room, with their hearts just burn right now, God. Just like an awareness.